An electrical skills test is used to evaluate the technical knowledge, practical skills and problem-solving abilities of individuals applying for electrical-related positions. Electrical aptitude assessment may include various types of questions, tasks and scenarios that gauge candidates' understanding of electrical principles, troubleshooting skills and practical applications. The examples of the questions might include theory and concept, circuit analysis and problem solving. For example, in theory and concepts, candidates may be tested on their understanding of electrical theories, concepts and fundamental principles. In circuit analysis questions, candidate could be presented with the circuit diagram and asked to analyze and troubleshoot them. Problem solving type of questions may include scenarios that involve electrical issues, where a candidate may be asked to diagnose and propose solutions to these problems. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared and pass an electrical skills test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end and, if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for this particular assessment, please make sure to follow the link in the description and comments of this video. And now let's go ahead and get started so we can get you prepared. Here's an amazing question to test your electrical skills, specifically your knowledge of electrical circuits. In the circuit shown, how many switches need to be closed to light up at least one bulb? You're presented with the circuit and you need to select one out of five possible choices. Choice A, none. Choice B, one. Choice C, two. Choice D, three. And last but not least, choice E, four switches. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. The key here is not to overthink the problem. So I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The key to solve these types of challenges is not to overthink the problem. Let's start with the definitions. We're dealing with multiple devices here. So let's look how do we define each one of them. Let's start with the battery. Battery is a device that converts stored chemical energy into electrical energy and provides the necessary voltage to drive the current through the circuit. Next one on the list is the light bulb. It's an electrical device that emits lights, producing visible illumination. We have four of these light bulbs, so let's give each one a unique ID. We'll call them L1, L2, L3, and L4. We also have four switches and switch represents a device that's designed to control the flow of electric current through the circuit. Switch can either complete the circuit in its closed position or break the circuit in its open position, enabling or interrupting the flow of electricity. Since we have four of them, let's give each switch a unique ID. We'll call them S1, S2, S3, and S4. And last concept that we're dealing with here is concept of circuit. Circuit is a defined pathway or route through which electric current can flow, connecting various components and allowing the transfer of electrical energy. Our circuit consists of one battery, four light bulbs, four switches, and all the conductors that connect these devices. To better understand how we should answer this question, let's understand how simple circuit works. Simple circuit contains only one light bulb, one switch, one battery and conductors connecting these devices. When the switch in the circuit with one switch and one bulb is closed, it allows the flow of electric current to pass through the circuit. In this state, the bulb lights up due to the passage of electrical current. When we open the switch, it breaks the circuit's continuity. As a result, the current stops flowing and the bulb turns off because there is no electricity that reaches it. Now with the understanding of the simple circuit, let's go back to the original question. I think that at least two switches need to be closed to light up at least one bulb in the circuit shown. And one of the closed switches must be S1. When switch S1 in the circuit is closed, it allows the flow from the negative battery terminal to be connected. In addition, any one of the switches S2, S3 or S4 need to be closed as well to create the flow of electricity, but at least one of them should be closed to light up at least one bulb. In this state, the bulb lights up due to the passage of electric current. 
So the correct answer here is choice C, two switches. I also have a question for you. If switches S1 and S3 are closed, how many light bulbs will light up? And which ones are they going to be? Please make sure to post your answer and solution and rationale in comments so I can give you my feedback. Here is the tricky problem, but I have full confidence you will be able to solve it. You have three switches outside the room and three light bulbs inside the room, with each switch controlling just one and only one light bulb. You need to determine which switch controls which bulb, but there are some limitations. For example, you cannot look inside the room while you're setting the switches, and you're only allowed to enter the room once. Bulbs are reachable, so when you enter the room, you will be able to switch bulbs if necessary. The question is, how can you determine which switch controls which bulb if you're only allowed to enter the room once? Tricky question, don't you think so? Mm -hmm. But the most interesting thing that there is a hint inside the question itself. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think to solve this challenge, you need to turn on any two bulbs and keep them on for the period of time. For example, to keep it simple, you can use switches 1 and 2 to turn them on. After a few minutes, you can turn off one of the switches that you initially turned on, for example, switch 2. The idea is that you let the bulb warm up, so you can determine which bulb was on for a period of time by touching it when you enter the room. When you enter the room, you will see that one bulb is on and two bulbs will be off, but you will be able to touch both bulbs that are off to determine which one is warm. This is the bulb that is connected to the switch too because this is the bulb that you turned on for a few minutes and then turned off. What's interesting is that there is a hint in the question itself. As we learned in the question, bulbs are reachable, so when you enter the room, you can switch the light bulbs if necessary. You have no need of switching them, but you can determine which bulb is warm, so you can determine which bulb was on for a period of time. Here's an amazing question to test your skills and knowledge. You're presented with the relay, and you need to identify the relay type, which is shown below. It could be one out of four possible choices. Choice A, SPST. Choice B, SPDT. Choice C, DPDT. And last but not least, choice D, none of the above. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Seems a little confusing, don't you think so? But I think I got my answer, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As usual, let's start with the definition. So what is a relay? Basically, a relay is a switch, and it's electrically operated switch, which is used to control the flow of current in the electrical circuit. There are many types of relays available, but let's focus on the three that are choices in the answers of this question. SPST. SPDT and DPDT. Let's start with the simplest one, single pole, single throw relay. In this relay, there is a single set of contacts, basically a single switch. This relay can provide a simple on-off control where the load, such as lamp, motor or solenoid, is either connected or disconnected. Here is the simple example where we turn on lighting bulb on and off. A lot more complex relay is DPDT which stands for double pole, double throw. This type of relay has two sets of contacts, each with a common terminal and two other terminals. Here's how DPDT relay works. As you might have guessed, DP stands for double pole. The double pole indicates that there are two separate circuits, poles, within the relay. Each pole has its own set of contacts. Double throw, DT on the other hand, means that each pole can switch between two different positions or states. In other words, each pole has a normally opened NO contact and normally closed NC contact. But as you might have guessed, neither SPST nor DPDT are the correct answer to the question. There is another type of relay, SPDT, which stands for single pole, double throw, which is shown on the original picture. In SPDT relay, there is a single set of common contacts that can be connected to one or two other sets of contacts. The common contacts are connected to either the normally open NO contact 
or the normally closed NC contact, but not both simultaneously. As PDT relays are used for applications where a changeover between two different states is needed. Common uses include reversing the direction of a motor, switching between two power sources, or toggling between two different devices. So the correct answer here is choice B, SPDT. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer, solution, and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question where you need to determine what's going to happen based on the diagram. You're presented with electrical diagram, which contains three bulbs, electricity generator, and one switch. You need to determine if the electrical switch is turned on, which light bulbs will light up. Take a close look and select the answer as one out of five possible choices. Choice A, light bulb one. Choice B, light bulbs one and three. Choice C, light bulb three. Choice D, none of the light bulbs. And last but not least, choice E, all of the light bulbs. Interesting question, don't you think so? I think I got my answer. So I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The diagram seems very complex. So let's start with the basics to understand what's going to happen. As you might be well aware, there are at least two types of circuits in electricity, serious circuit and parallel circuit. In the serious circuit with two light bulbs, the current has only one pass to flow. And if one bulb is not functioning, for example, it could be burned out, it will break the circuit and prevent the other bulb from lighting up. In a parallel circuit, each component, each bulb, has its own separate path for current to flow. Turning on the switch would allow current to flow through both bulbs independently, and they would both light up. If one of the bulbs is dysfunctional in parallel circuit, it will only impact the burned up bulb, as the other bulb in the circuit will light up. In this question, we have parallel circuits and serious circuit as part of electrical diagram. Turning on the switch would allow current to flow through both parallel circuits independently, and they would both light up, but only if all bulbs were functional. I don't know if you noticed, but light bulb 2 is dysfunctional light bulb. And since it is dysfunctional, and it is part of the serious circuit, which is inside of the parallel circuit 2, neither bulb 1 nor bulb 2 will light up. So the correct answer is choice 3. Light bulb 3 will light up if we turn on the switch. Did you get to the same conclusion? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and help you to pass any test. If the content was helpful, please click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials. I really appreciate you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become YouTube member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.